I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. Watch ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets, and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved unto myself seven thousand men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Last week, the Most High changed the message at the last minute to talk about the Israelites and the strangers. The message was well received on both sides. There is more to be said concerning the strangers and the Israelites. I have said on multiple occasions on this channel that we have many strangers watching our channels, some because they are tired of the lies and are seeking truth, while others to find a way to put a wedge in the awakening. Those whose sole purpose is to disrupt the awakening are not strangers. They would be classified as the wicked and the Most High said have nothing to do with the wicked. The Most High revealed to us that the strangers would cleave to the Israelites and the strangers would assist in helping the Israelites get back to their homeland. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them, and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. The Most High has given me the gift of discernment. I view what is happening in this world in a different perspective. The Most High has given me the opportunity to see the world in his perspective by the Holy Spirit. One of my many goals is to help Israelites view this world in the lenses of the Most High. I want you to see how close our Elohim is truly is to us and how active he is in our everyday lives. The popular opinions of this world is influenced by the kingdom of darkness. Satan has blinded the eyes of many. Instead of reacting to events the way you were programmed by the kingdom of darkness, I want you to start viewing these events with your spiritual eyes. For example, for some Israelites, they do not want the strangers to have any portion in the awakening because many Israelites are hurt by how the nations have mistreated them. The strangers are a constant reminder of the people who mistreat and continue to oppress the Israelites until this day. Those Israelites are viewing the strangers as the descendants of the diabolical people who oppress them. Any Israelite that view the strangers in that manner are operating in the flesh. Anything that has to do with the flesh, the kingdom of darkness is in control. You cannot please the most high in the flesh. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. The kingdom of darkness want you to operate in the flesh. That way they can disconnect you from the most high and close your spiritual eyes. When I look at what is happening in the world, I see the scriptures being fulfilled and I can see the most high everywhere. If I view the strangers like outsiders who believe they know more about the Elohim of Israel than an Israelite does, and the strangers wants to control the awakening and dictate how we should live, that would be the flesh perspective and it is of the kingdom of darkness. In the Most High's perspective, which would be the spiritual side of me, would reveal the kingdom of darkness is operating through the stranger to interfere with the awakening and my destiny. With the gift of discernment, if you use the gift to serve the Most High, your spiritual side would be more dominant. In addition, you would know how to fight back in the spirit. Instead of attacking the stranger, I would cast my cares onto the Most High because he cares for me and he would plead my case. Casting all your care upon him, but he careth for you. The strangers watching, listening, and seeking truth is cleaving to the Israelites, just as the scriptures state that they would. Israelites can either react in the flesh or view what is happening around you with your spiritual eyes. 
by the strangers watching and listening to our channels and the strangers seeking truth. That is how they are cleaving and that is how the scriptures are being fulfilled. I believe some Israelites expect the strangers to bow down to them and worship them. In addition, they want them to apologize and acknowledge they are the Israelites. I believe that is how some Israelites want the strangers to cleave. If you have not read the scripture that states, Yah's ways is not like our ways, his thoughts are greater than our thoughts. My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. I recommend that you meditate on that verse. The way the Most High will get the strangers to cleave to his people is not going to be the way you expect. Many events have taken place in my life that I thought could have been handled in a different way. However, when the Most High finished what he was doing in me, I matured spiritually and the journey he took me on to fulfill what was promised solved many other things in my life in the process. A trial has multiple purpose. A good example I can give you to further your understanding. Everyone have heard of the story of Jonah. The Most High has commanded him to go to Nineveh to speak against the city because their wickedness have reached the Most High. Jonah knew the Most High would forgive the people. Jonah decided to go against the will of the Most High. The story went on to explain how Jonah fled to Tarshish. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. And he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. The Most High caused Jonah to be swallowed by a well and stayed in the body of the well for three days and three nights. When the Most High caused the well to vomit Jonah out, he was right back to where he started. The Most High could have used other methods to get Jonah back on the mission he sent him on. However, the Most High chose to have Jonah be swallowed by a well. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Just like how he had the Levites walk around the city of Jericho and scream and the walls came down, he could have used another method, but he chose to do it that way. The reason the Most High go to great length to deliver his people, he wants the world to know he was the one who delivered his people through the magnificent display of his powers. The heathens would be amazed and encourage non-Israelites to serve him. There are many other extraordinary stories that can testify to his purpose. In the process of getting Jonah back on his mission, the Most High caused three heathens to repent and serve him. The sailors on the boat that was traveling with Jonah to Tarshish serve other gods. They each cried out to their God. Jonah was unbothered like a stiff-necked Israelite. He went to the bottom deck to sleep. If Jonah's behavior towards the calamity surrounding him did not describe a black person, I do not know what else would. The sailors made him get up to pray to his God so they would not perish. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship and he lay and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, what meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. If so be that God will think upon us, that we perish not. When the sailors saw that the Elohim of Israel was supreme, they bowed down and worshipped the Most High. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord, and made vows. Strangers, can you comprehend that the Most High is the Elohim of Israel, not the world? When a non-Israelite truly repent and serve the Elohim of Israel, that is when they begin a relationship. Prior to knowing the Most High, non-Israelites serve idols. The Most High is an Elohim of Israel, the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not the world. You have to understand that. The doctrine of the Most High Yah being a God to the world came from the synagogue of Satan through religion. You are no longer in religion. 
Cleaving to an Israelite do not mean you have to worship the Israelites. That would bring judgment on you and the Israelite who allow the stranger to worship them. The Most High hates the sin of idolatry. There should be no other gods before him. If an Israelite is telling you to bow down to them, they are of Satan. Remember when Satan said to Yahshua to bow down and worship him? That is no different from an Israelite saying to a stranger to bow down and worship him or her. You should not comply. You are to serve the Most High and only worship the Most High. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Any Israelite who feel they should be praised by non-Israelites are out of order and need to repent. Remember, you are serving a sentence for the iniquity of your fathers as well as your own sins. You are not in a position to order anyone to bow down to you. Your role as an Israelite is to teach the strangers how to serve the Elohim of Israel. Likewise, strangers, you are in no position to make demands, nor could you force your way into the coming kingdom. You should be praising the Most High for giving you an opportunity. When the Most High pour out his judgment against his people and exile the Israelites from the promised land, Yah used your ancestors, strangers, to execute the judgment. Until this day, your people are wicked towards the Israelites. When the Most High used the heathens and the serpent seed to scatter his people, he did not say for the heathens to rape, murder, and abuse his people. Until this day, your nations are oppressing his people. Your people's wickedness is no different from the sins of the Israelites. Who are you to judge any Israelite? Just because you serve the Elohim of Israel, it does not conclude you are sinless. Every fruit produced after its own kind. Remember, you are descendants of the people who oppress the Israelites. Your history is a testimony against your nations and people. Most of your nations are against the Elohim of Israel. Presently, your people are ruling with the kingdom of darkness. You are in no position to make demands or to exalt yourself above the natural branches. Some strangers believe they are sinless and that the Most High will not judge them. The Elohim of Israel you proclaim you love in this awakening is not the same Elohim the synagogue of Satan served in the pagan church. Regardless of how far the Israelites have fallen, nor how many times the Israelites forsake their Elohim, the Most High will choose Israel. The Most High will redeem his people. It still do not give you the right to come against the Israelites, nor try to debate the Israelites. If you truly serve the Elohim of Israel, you would speak against your people and your nation's iniquity, since the strangers are people from different nations that serve the Elohim of Israel. You would encourage your people to repent and inform them of the truth. Just because you find the truth and repent, however you keep the truth to yourself by remaining silent, you will not escape the judgment the Most High has reserved for your nations. Due to your negligence, you will be judged with your people. When Esther became a queen, she was in a position to help her people, the Israelites. When her uncle Mordecai heard of the evil the heathens plot towards the Israelites, Mordecai asked Esther to use her position given to her by the Most High to save her people. And Mordecai told him of all that had happened unto him, and of the sum of the money that Haman had promised to pay to the king's treasuries for the Jews to destroy them. Also he gave him the copy of the writing of the decree that was given at Shishan to destroy them, to show it unto Esther, and to declare it unto her, and to charge her that she should go in unto the king, to make supplication unto him, and to make request before him for her people. Queen Esther feared the consequences of entering the king's chamber without the king inviting her. Again Esther spake unto Hatak, and gave him commandment unto Mordecai. All the king's servants and all the people of the king's provinces do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king into the inner court, who is not called, there is one law of his to put him to death, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter, that he may live. But I have not been called to come in unto the king these thirty days. And they told to Mordecai Esther's words. Mordecai's response to Queen Esther to me was the greatest response ever. Every time I read that scripture, it gives me chills. Do not think you will escape the persecutions towards your people because you are in the king's palace. The Most High will raise another deliverer for his people. 
you and your father's house will perish. And who knows, you will call to the kingdom for such a time as this. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Strangers, learn from Queen Esther's story. She was an orphan the Most High raised to help her people in her generation. The Most High has awakened you for a purpose, and that purpose is not to fight with the Israelites, but to help your nations, in addition to speak up against the injustices towards the Israelites. Strangers, if you remain silent at this time, the Most High will raise up another stranger to help his people. You and your nation will perish. Who knows if you will awaken to this truth at such a time as this. Strangers, you should be warning your family and your people. The Most High has exiled his people from their homeland. They are living among their enemies. The Israelites' enemies are ruling over them. They have been stripped from everything that was given to them. The Most High has allowed this to take place. What makes you think your nation and your people will not be held accountable? What do you believe the Most High will do to a stranger? The Elohim of Israel is not the passive deity you know in the pagan church. The Israelites' inheritance is not for grabs. The remnant of Israelites who repent will inherit the kingdom. The Most High will make a new covenant with his people, not with the world. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts, and write it in their hearts, and will be their God and they shall be my people. The Israelites are not the only one who should be crying out. The so-called strangers should be doing the same. If you love the Elohim of Israel like you proclaim, you would love and accept his people as well. Israelites, the Most High said we should love the stranger and be kind to them. And if a stranger sojourn with thee in your land, ye shall not vex him. But the stranger that dwelleth with you shall be unto you as one born among you. And thou shalt love him as thyself. For ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Listen to me carefully, Israelites. Yes, the Most High loved the strangers and asked us to do the same. However, the Most High did not give us permission to marry a stranger. You are to marry an Israelite. It takes two Israelites to make an Israelite offspring. An Israelite and a stranger's offspring is not an Israelite. You are what your father is when two Israelites from two different tribes within Israel marry. Your children will identify with the tribe of his or her father. The Most High said what he said. The ways of men seems perfect in his own eyes, but the Most High search his spirit. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. Unity is what we should aim to achieve. The Most High said a kingdom or a household divided shall not stand. To be successful against the synagogue of Satan, empowered by the kingdom of darkness, we have to learn to serve our Elohim, obey his statutes, laws, and the commandments. Listen to the Most High when he instructs us. Divide and conquer is a strategy Satan is using. There is no division in the kingdom of darkness. Do not allow Satan to bring division in the family of righteousness. Israelites and strangers working together is better than Israelites and strangers fighting. You must stand for something. Do not let your time pass you by in the physical realm. I hope the strangers are beginning to understand their role in the awakening. As we get deeper and deeper into truth, your knowledge will increase and you will be without excuse. Everyone has to stand before the Elohim of Israel to give an account of what he or she did when their knowledge increased. You do not want to stand before the most high strangers and have nothing to show. Neither do you Israelites. All of us wants to hear well done. You are no longer playing church. Do not allow the kingdom of darkness to deceive you into operating in the flesh. Remember, fighting in the flesh is Satan versus Satan. 
Choose the most high as your source and you will defeat your enemies every time. Now is the time to call on the most high to overthrow the kingdom of darkness and its human agents. Also the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord, to be his servants and be one that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar. For mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all people.